Right now, I just heard that. I'm to send out the spies for you. What did the spies do? They went out and they scouted out the promised land. Right? And when they came back, you know, there was a little scuffle there. Some didn't believe and two did. But the thing is, is when Israel went into the promised land, in Numbers 21, it says that they went in by the way of the spies. Meaning that they knew how to get in. Because the spies already scouted it out for them. Do you understand? There's actual spiritual beings, angelic forces that are the spies. How many of you want to receive that? Just say, loose the spies on my behalf, Lord, right now. Have them go and scout out the promised land for me. And bring me back the directions on how to get in. Yes, we release them now. We release them now. We release them now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, go, go. Go, go in the name of Jesus. Go. Go in the name of Jesus. Go. Jesus, right now. Thank you, Jesus. So when you're in your prayer time and you hear the spies are back, receive them because what it is is the Lord is bringing you back information. The angelic went forward and, and found the path that you need to take to get to the destination you want to get to. And then they come back and they release that information to you. It's like going on Google Maps. They come back and they stick a Google Map inside of you. They go, poof, there's the way right there. You understand? I hear that all the time. When I need something done, the Lord will come to me. He says, send out the spies. So I'll send them out and like maybe five minutes later or the next day or three days later, all of a sudden out of the middle of nowhere, I'll be praying in tongues and the Lord will say, the spies are back. And I'll just be like, sure. And I'll receive it. And then pretty soon, like revelation starts flooding in and God will tell me that my next steps of what to take and where to go. The root, because remember it says that the Israelites went into the promised land via the root of the spies, the way of the spies. All right? We just thank you for all you've done already, Lord. We see all these things that have happened in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus, thank you. Hey, everybody. I bet you every single person in here is really walking as best as they can to please the Lord. Right? Right? You, I, mean, you're, I mean, you're repenting quickly and everything else like that, so you're thinking when well, you're preaching to the choir. But see, today God's telling me, he, he showed me how to take it deeper. You guys, you guys are already up here on a level that a lot of people aren't out, up on. I really believe that about all of you here. Okay? God has showed me a way to dig in deeper, a way that you would never expect, a way that you haven't done before that's going to show you some stuff that you, you didn't know, that you weren't even aware of, and it's going to take you up here. See, that's why there's this particular crowd here today. Do you understand? We're going to move into that. Is that cool? Right. That's so cool. Okay, so... <laughs> So repentance removes everything that prevents the supernatural from manifesting. This is the secret. Do you understand what I'm doing here? I'm giving you a big piece of the puzzle, man. I'm giving you a super duper key. It's like you want to see more signs and wonders? This is the huge secret right here. If you can stay in this attitude of repentance that we're going to cultivate today, holy cow, you're going to see the level of signs and wonders go from here to here. Bam! Bam! Just like that, because it's so deeply embedded and, and proved in Scripture. Okay, so I want you to listen to the first Old Testament prophecy about the coming of the ministry of John the Baptist. As you listen to these verses, I want you to see how the ministry of repentance is totally connected in with, with healing, with getting healing. Okay, Malachi 4 says this, Surely... The day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble. And that day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or not a root or a branch will be left to them. But unto you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will arise with healing in its wings. Then verse 5 it says, See, I will send you the prophet Elisha before. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Okay, this is a prophetic word about the coming of John the Baptist, right? That he comes before Christ comes, the son of righteousness with healing in his wings. Before, right? Now, John the Baptist, according to the scripture, would carry the same spirit as Elisha. 
Remember who Elisha was? He is the prophet who had the showdown with Jezebel and the 480 priests on Mount Carmel, right? Elisha has a ministry of repentance. That day during that showdown, what happened was is, is Jezebel and her people were leading the Israelite people to, to commit idol, idolatry, okay? And in this, in this supernatural showdown that happened on the mountain, Elisha calls the Israelite people to repent for following after other gods. And they do. They repent. And, and their repentance is so powerful, it breaks out in the miraculous. A famine that had been on the land for three years is broken. Ooh, that's a word right there. I could preach on that for an hour. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. What's going on now? What, is, what, what will repentance do for you? Break you right out of the famine. Hello? Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So the scripture in Malachi says that the ministry of repentance is what would come before the great day of the Lord Jesus. Because you see, repentance is what would, quote, cause the son of righteousness to arise with healing in its wings. Repentance, healing. Repentance, healing. Totally tied together all the way throughout scripture. Repentance comes first, and then healing springs forth from that repentance. Do you understand? Kingdom of God, healing, signs, wonders come when repentance sweeps through the whole body as a mass. One person can repent, and that's good. But when we all get there, when we all start getting there, what's going to happen? It is a biblical fact. Repentance produces healing and signs and wonders. It is, it is a biblical fact. So if we're all beginning, if everyone in this room right now, this specially hand-picked group that's here, because that's what I believe about this group today, this specially hand-picked group were to begin to really move in this message, in its power, and then like, and then osmose it onto other people around you, right? And then they see what happens, and, and it starts to break out and spread, 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 all through the body, then bam, I mean, signs and wonders everywhere we go, out on the street, in your home, in the corner, everywhere you go, just breaking out, because why? There would be no sin or the demonic to hinder the arrival of the kingdom. So it just has to come. It has to come. Right? Re everybody say repentance is good. Repentance empowers us. Yes. Repentance is directly connected to the manifestation of God's supernatural signs and wonders. Let me prove it to you more. I want to show you what happened when that word in Malachi got fulfilled about Elijah's ministry, got fulfilled in the New Testament. Okay? In this scripture in Matthew 16 and 17, Jesus is speaking with his disciples. He says this, I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. Okay, so Jesus is telling them that some of you are about to see the kingdom of heaven arrive and me, and me, Jesus, entering into it. Okay, six days later, bang, it happens. Jesus takes his three of his disciples up on the mountain, right? And the scripture says this, that while they were there, that Jesus' appearance underwent a change in their presence. Oh, man, I could preach on that for an hour. Underwent a change in their presence. And his face shone clear and bright like the sun. And his clothing became as white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, who kept talking with him. Then behold, a shining cloud composed of light overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love and I delight in. Listen to him. Whew, Jesus makes the statement, Some of you are going to see me coming into the kingdom of heaven. And bang, it happens. They go up on the high mountain, and this shining cloud of glory appears. What does glory represent? What does it say is in, in Revelation 15? That in the sanctuary of heaven, it's saturated with glory. So if you're down here on earth, and you see a tangible manifestation of the glory cloud that you can see, touch, feel, and everything else, what does that mean? Heaven, the kingdom of heaven, has come to earth. It has invaded earth, Right? Okay, and of course, we just heard that when the kingdom of heaven comes to earth, that signs and wonders come with it. I mean, you see all the signs and wonders. It says that uh, the glory arrived, Moses and Elijah appeared. Um, Jesus' appearance was changed. And later on in the story, when Jesus goes down the mountain, still covered with the kingdom of heaven, with that glory, what happens? A boy that nobody can deliver, who has epilepsy, gets healed and delivered in an instant by Jesus. Signs and wonders happen. 
What does all that have to do with repentance? Who showed up on the mountain? Elisha. He was one of the guys that showed up on the mountain. What does he represent? He represents the ministry of repentance. Did you see how it went? It says, and behold, there appeared Moses and Elijah. Then a shining cloud overshadowed them. Boy, repentance comes, shows up, and then, bam, the kingdom of heaven shows up with signs and wonders following. Do you see that? That was the fulfillment of that word for Malachi. Elijah showed up, the spirit of repentance, and the glory cloud came. And then signs and wonders and people were healed and all kinds of stuff happened. Do you see the progression, the order in which things have to happen? It has to happen in that order. And then we will see more of the manifestation of the things of the kingdom. We all need to be in the position of repentance. We need to be preaching repentance, praying for repentance, walking out repentance ourselves, being quick to repent, being quick to ask for forgiveness, being, being quick to forgive And I don't mean an easy prayer like, I forgive that person. I mean, you sit there and you go, I forgive that person, I forgive that person, until you really get like a visitation and you're changed. The other night, I had to uh, lay and repent for two hours. And then I got my visitation. And I was healed. I had a sign and wonder, follow it. Oh, I'll just tell you the story now. <laughs> How many of you know a person like me can, can get uh, whacked in the face sometimes? I'm a target by the demonic and by people too, right? We're always under scrutiny. People are always, you know, demanding things and stuff like that. Okay, well, I had had a, a week or two or three, and I had been helping uh, quite a few different people. I try to take my personal time out to help people. I can't do everybody, but I try to pick my projects as the Lord lead me, leads me to do that. Okay. So I was doing that, and I got punched in the face a lot, big time, by some situations. And I started to complain about it. Instead of going, praise the Lord, this is teaching me stuff, and having the right heart attitude about the way I was using my mouth, because there is a place that you cross over with your mouth. You see that? I mean, I was wording my discussions about it wrong. And I had the wrong spirit behind it as I was starting to discuss it. After about the 15th or so punch in the chin, I was like, well, you know, okay. And God was not happy. And I remember going to bed and I felt like this empty deadness. And I went, what's going on, Lord? And he showed me a picture. He showed me an x-ray. I saw an x-ray hanging on the wall with a skeleton, right? And the skeleton was, looks like this. And I said, that skeleton's neck is broken. He goes, yeah, that skeleton's you. Holy cow. And I had to repent. I had to lay on the floor. And I mean, I got beat up. So I'm forgiving and repenting and everything at the same time. Two hours took me. Two hours. And the whole time, as it started to break through, I mean, when you just go like this, I forgive that person and, and forgive me, Lord. That's just not good enough. <laughs> it was like after about an hour of it, then the power started coming. And the power started coming. And all I did was go, I repent, I repent, forgive me, wash me clean, and my mouth and my heart, and oh my gosh, and I forgive them, and oh my gosh, Lord, help, and, and forgive me again. And then right where I saw that break, started to burn like somebody took a slab of Ben Gay and went, what? I mean, literally, I mean, in the natural, burning, 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 as I was what? Being healed of my sin. Yes. 